Bien, buenos días a todos. Yo eh, bueno, voy a hacer la presentación en, en un momento. Quiero recordarles, eso sí, que, que tenemos un programa eh, bueno, amplio en el que, además de la conferencia de hoy, en la que se va a hablar sobre buenas prácticas en la supervisión de, doctora, eh, de doctorandos y, de alguna manera, el, el, la incentivación y, y de alguna manera, el recluta, reclutamiento de, de buenos supervisores para el doctorado, eh, en los próximos días, bueno, a continuación, tendremos el, el, la primera fase, los dos primeros grupos de, de este, decía Rafa, el vicerrector, que, eh, ¿cómo se llamaba? Certamen, hemos quedado en llamarlo, certamen de comunicación, mi tesis en, en cinco minutos, habrá dos, dos eliminatorias esta misma mañana. Eh, mañana tendremos una mesa redonda sobre el futuro profesional de los doctores, una tercera eliminatoria y toda la mañana la sesión de del certamen Mi proyecto de tesis en un póster y el último día pues será además de una, de una conferencia sobre buenas prácticas de hecho en el uso de las de las eh, uni, eh, sistemas de bibliometría, bibliografía, eh, visibilidad a través de esas bases de datos bibliométricas de, de la investigación, pues además de eso tendremos la final de, de este certamen de Mi tesis en cinco minutos. Voy a presentar a continuación al profesor eh, Helmut Brentel que, que bueno, de hecho la conferencia pues les anuncio que va a ser en inglés, supongo que a estas alturas no hay ningún problema. First of all, I, I'd like to thank you uh, for coming, uh, for your kindness and, and willingness to come here to, to share with us your broad experience in, in doctoral supervision, doctoral education in Europe. Uh, Helmut Brentel es un académico, investigador y supervisor, es decir, que conoce bien la práctica en el área de la sociología y aprendizaje de las organizaciones. Eh, es asesor para el desarrollo de la Escuela de Grado de la Universidad Get de Frankfurt y su especialidad profesional pues, ha sido el desarrollo de la educación superior y las escuelas de doctorado en el marco del proceso de Bolonia, en Alemania, pero eh, los últimos años, de hecho, pues, eh, en toda Europa. Desde el año 98 hasta el 2001 coordinó, hace ya tiempo, eh, coordinó un proyecto piloto de la Conferencia Federal de Landes eh, de Alemania, cuyo fin era eh, implementar el esquema de grado y máster en la educación superior alemana. Ellos siguieron el mismo proceso que nosotros, pero por eso decía lo de hace ya algún tiempo, porque evidentemente lo empezaron un, un poco antes. Eh, eh, después de eso, como director ejecutivo del Programa Internacional de Programado de Programa en Ciencias Sociales, en 2001 se estableció la primera escuela de doctorado con la estructura eh, nueva, digamos, dentro del, de, del Espacio Europeo de Educación Superior, a la que nosotros también estamos llegando, eh, en eh, la Universidad Goethe de Frankfurt y en el año 2006 la escuela de grado en, para las humanidades y las ciencias sociales. Es lo que él describía ayer en una conversación que tuvimos como una especie de estructura paraguas que, eh, digamos, incorpora escuelas de doctorado, escuelas de, de máster, máster de investigación, etc. Ha contribuido con numerosas presentaciones en conferencias y talleres organizados tanto por la Unión Europea, la European University Association y el Council for Doctoral Education de, de la European University Association. Eh, ha sido profesor, conferenciante e instructor en muchas universidades europeas que proyectan establecer escuelas de doctorado y desde 2011 eh, proporciona asesoramiento y consultoría a universidades y escuelas de doctorado de toda Europa con el fin de mejorar la calidad de la formación de doctoral a través de eh, la mejora de, eh, y el entrenamiento de supervisores de, de doctorado. Ese es sin duda uno de los retos más importantes que plantea la nueva concepción del doctorado eh, que se lleve a cabo una supervisión que asegure en la mayor medida posible los resultados y el éxito, una supervisión que no sea algo particular como frecuentemente era hasta ahora, sino algo compartido en el que participa no solo el director, sino hay otra figura que a veces es la misma, pero no necesariamente, que es el, el tutor, desde luego las comisiones académicas de los programas de doctorado, no está de más decir que muchas veces el, el motivo y la razón más frecuente de abandono de un, de, del doctorado es el desentendimiento entre doctorando y supervisor o director. No es algo ya una cuestión personal, sino muchas veces pues, falta de, de, de motivación, falta de comunicación pues por, por diferentes cuestiones desde la, la, la ocupación hasta pues, bueno, mil posibilidades. En cualquier caso, el nuevo doctorado obliga a un seguimiento del progreso, que veremos mañana, lo comentaremos, del progreso del doctorando y del estudiante de doctorado. Se ha puesto de moda a hablar del candidato eh, doctoral o doctorando para, para nosotros, para los que hablamos en castellano, 
eh, pero que no por ello dejan de ser estudiantes. Por ello es muy importante esta conferencia y espero que, que, bueno, pues que, que saquen eh, conclusiones interesantes de ella. Y yo también, profesor Brentel, muy bueno. Thank you for the kind introduction, and uh, especially I have to say that I'm uh, very much happy for this invitation uh, to Las Palmas and for your interest and engagement in this uh, extremely important topic. Um, I'm talking today. Uh, I'm talking today mainly about uh, doctoral supervisors' engagement and good practices in uh, doctoral supervision. And it's an overview, an insight into the evolution and design of research supervision. So it's about supervision, research supervision, and supervisors' training. Of course, there are so many uh, different uh, important topics talking about doctoral education. But I, I'm sure, I, I really hope that uh, after my presentation uh, there's uh, a lot of uh, interest and uh, opportunity for discussion and of course you can raise other questions too uh, in this uh, broad topic. Um, <coughs> so, um, I'm giving you today an uh, overview and a review on this evolving field of doctoral uh, education in the sense of supervision and supervisors training. And so this is this uh, title, Taking Stock and Looking into the Future. Um, and uh, of course you will see uh, soon in my presentation, uh, this is a field uh, which evolved uh, 30 years ago in, in UK and in Australia and, and we are, let's say, catching up. Yeah. And we uh, also, me and we in Germany, we, for a long time we didn't really understand uh, the importance of this field. <laughs> this is why I, I am saying here, uh, developing and improving the second st uh, standing leg of doctoral education because after 2001, uh, we in Frankfurt, uh, we, we uh, we're establishing the, the new structured, uh, new style doctoral schools, uh, rather graduate schools with a lot of service in 2000, from 2001 on, and, and then uh, very uh, with a high impact from 2004 on with this excellence money. But uh, on this other standing leg, <laughs> we, 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 did, we did not know that this is so important. And that is developed in not on continental Europe. It's developed in, uh, especially in UK and Australia. And then, uh, 2009, I and some others uh, really understood uh, that we uh, have to catch up and to develop that. And uh, of course, according to our needs. Yeah. And I will talk about these things. So taking stock and looking into the future. And so uh, we are dealing with questions uh, uh, like where are we right now in April 2016 and what do we have reached so far in this field, what's still lagging ahead, what defines the dynamic and the change and development and how can we, how should we engage and convince doctoral supervisors, candidates and university heads. These are uh, the main uh, general questions, and I have structured my talk in five core questions, which structure the chapters, and the five questions is, are, why is a good notion of the history and state of the art so important, yeah? so the, the history of this 30 years, if we do not really understand that, uh, we have uh, difficulties, because we were in the past not the driving forces. 
why do we have to fully keep in mind the challenge and mistakes as well as the, the, the success strategies when engaging and implementing supervisors and trainings. So challenges and mistakes and success strategies, this is uh, very much the focus to understand uh, these in extremely important points. And third, why is thinking and acting with comprehensive concepts indispensable? Comprehensive concepts in dealing with that, in developing this field. And then, of course, the question, uh, is that what we are starting now, what we are doing, successful? Yeah? So evaluation of supervisor's training, how could this function? Yeah? Of course, it's a certain field and we have to uh, rethink that. And fifth, why is orientation on outstanding quality, convincing best practices and success stories the key to overcome procrastination and to gain bright performance and sustainable development in this field? Because we are starting now in continental Europe, we are starting since some years, yeah, we are uh, accelerating, catching up, but of course there is still a lot of uh, hesitation, let's say. Yeah? And, and uh, not everybody is, is uh, let's say, uh, the, the real forerunner or the avant-garde. And but but there are some, yeah. And so we have uh, very nice uh, best practice examples, and I will tell you about. And the new best practice examples are in Spain. <laughs> so first, why is a good notion of the history and the state of the art so important? It's of special importance uh, because a change of mindsets and best practices in the observation is developing, ongoing since the 1980. And we have, uh, we were totally cut off this development. And so uh, this history is important and I start with the history uh, to show you uh, what has happened and what is happening and where are good resources to, to get informed. Yeah. So uh, please excuse that the slides are not the uh, perfect uh, uh, slides of PowerPoint presentation with the, the only keywords and a few information. I want to give you some information. And uh, so it started in the um, it started 1985. The discussion in Great Britain uh, whether the British can continue, as in the past, that a, uh, a, a very good researcher is automatically a very good supervisor. And uh, second, that uh, this uh, could be learned just by doing. There is no, no training, no initial introduction necessary. Yeah? And some tough people started this debate, of course, a, a big controversy in the first years. But it developed nicely, and uh, around 1990, you could, can see the first very good articles in, in pedagogical journals and other uh, popping up, and then the first books about research supervision was, were written. So all this literature, almost all this good literature, is written by UK and Australian colleagues. Yeah. Um, and you, if you go to the websites of these universities, you find a lot of uh, information, tools, how they do it, how they structure it, how the, they do the trainings, and so on. Uh, a very good resource is uh, University of Oxford Learning Institute. Yeah. Uh, a few times li later, Australia started, of course, because of Commonwealth connections. And now they are also very much uh, developed there is this group of eight research intensive universities, GO8. If you go to their websites, you see a lot of things, yeah? and they have a common frame how to do it. And uh, we have not, not time to, to explain this frame, but just one word. In, in this university, uh, supervisor's training is obligatory yeah, for the younger ones, for, for those who start. And, and they do it in a kind of uh, great system uh, which means that the supervisors are only allowed to supervise more and more doctor candidates 
uh, if they um, participate in these trainings. Yeah? And they have a limit there. The starters, yeah, with, with the, uh, let's say, initial workshop, they are allowed to uh, <coughs> supervise the maximum of six doctor candidates, which means as a, a first and second supervisor <coughs> together, yeah? so maybe three and three. And the very much advanced supervisors, uh, experienced scholars, uh, the limit is 12. Though this is, they do it in UK and Australia, and, and they have developed a kind of standard procedure now. Uh, it's obligatory, it's a standard procedure in these universities, especially for the beginners. Late. But they also have procedures uh, to serve for the experienced ones and to offer these things. This is, of course, not obligatory, it's, it's volunteer. Uh, but uh, they, they want to develop a history of, of ongoing uh, exchange of experience and, and uh, inputs and so on. Yeah. But uh, you are always supported and accompanied in your professional career. So, from these things, we didn't know anything. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, more or less nothing. Uh, continent Europe was totally sleeping. And uh, but it changed in 2009, from 2009 on, because in January 2009 there was a, a conference, conference workshop of EOA, CDE, Council of Doctoral Education, Uni European University Association, on the topic of uh, research supervision and supervisors training. And <coughs> there, me and others uh, suddenly understood, <laughs> we, 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 we didn't notice really what they are doing. And even first Scandinavian universities were presenting 2009, for example, uh, uh, Karolinska Institute, yeah, that they are going to do something and they are reflecting on that and they have first concepts. And this, of course, then for me, the alarm clocks were, were very loud, yeah, uh, that, that, the, that we are, uh, have now wonderful doctoral schools, but <laughs> we are standing on one leg. Yeah. And, we, we, uh, and so, uh, we tried to catch up. I, we had in 2009 and 2010 with some colleagues and friends um, kind of workshops. We called it master classes. We met in Dubrovnik in an old uh, nun's monastery um, belonging to the University of Zagreb. And so we were talking about these things and beginning to make concepts. And I also made my concepts for supervisors training. And I gave the first supervisors training in Cluj in Romania in 2011 and from then on uh, but it developed now yeah. um, nicely uh, and so we have different states of development uh, stronger in Scandinavian countries I'll come back to this in a minute uh, then uh, promising developments in Austria, Germany and Switzerland uh, during the last uh, years I, I tell that more in detail at the end, especially the uh, example of Tarragona. We had, I have very nice experiences with these universities. They made comprehensive uh, impact uh, programs yeah, for um, four trainings per year and, and in Tarragona also training of trainers program that they have their own trainers, not only me. So this uh, is, these kind of impact programs are the future. And I'm very happy that Spain is going so uh, nicely ahead, yeah, and they understand this. Those people with whom I was working, or I'm working, they stand it, understand it very nicely. Um, and, and that I'm invited here, of course, is a, is a third strong indicator for my <laughs> hypothesis. Um, yeah, uh, so we have also <coughs> beginning development in the Baltic states, Belgium, France, Ireland, Netherlands, Portugal. Other <laughs> regions in Europe are uh, still very much hesitating. Italy, Greece and uh, Eastern countries. Yeah, the, the, I was giving one workshop in Krakow, but uh, the whole of the Eastern countries, it's, it's, uh, maybe they are open, but also still a kind of hesitating uh, situation. and. and not real impact, but the point is to have real impact in a relatively short time, 
and to get critical mass of trained young supervisors, especially the young ones, oh, yeah. broad notion of young, of course, uh, in, in a short time. In Germany, we are now also catching up uh, very nicely. A lot of universities around uh, 25 to 30 have now supervisors training. Uh, and so the interest uh, is high. The impact is just, the higher impact is just starting. It's just starting. It's not, it was not yet. Yeah? Even if we have supervisors trained since some years, uh, this, this were often uh, single, single events. Yeah? One single event in this year and perhaps one in the next, something like that. The real impact things are just starting. Uh, in Frankfurt, I'm doing it in Frankfurt and I I'm starting with more impact at the Technical University in Dresden now. And, but I, I think it's, it's this year and the next year that these impact things really will come. Uh, what is interesting uh, that we have uh, since some years this new university association for the uh, improvement of young scientists in Germany and uh, they are organizing workshops and conferences and they have uh, produced a booklet on uh, best practice and supervision supervisors training and there's an article from me there. I, you, you can go on the website, it's a uh, German and English version. I have some uh, just to show a few booklets with me and there's a uh, short article about the events and the progress in Tarragona. The Scandinavian countries as I said, started a little bit earlier, especially uh, the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm is on continental Europe, I would say, in, in, in the practice and the experience uh, has a leading position and I know them uh, meanwhile quite well and they uh, want to, even if they have started the, as the first, they want to develop. Yeah? They, they are eager to make contact to all the others who are developing. And, uh, and build a community of, of practitioners or a community of champions, or how you would like to call it. And, uh, um, and so they are one of the driving forces we have. Yeah. And uh, because of that, I just want to show you very quickly uh, what you can see on their website, how they are doing it at the moment. But I know they are now uh, trying to uh, develop a redone, uh, enhanced concept yeah, uh, together with European partners. So they have invited me, for example, to, to be on the International Advisory Board for them. Yeah? They, they want to bring this European knowledge and experience together to improve themselves. And they have a five days introductory uh, uh, obligatory uh, supervisors training yeah, this, uh, with these topics. Uh, but they also have follow-up programs, and these are the last two bullet points, yeah, uh, so one and a half hour things, but also uh, five half-day things <coughs> further on uh, under the title Pedagogy for Doctoral Supervisors. Uh, we in continental Europe are not at the moment at the situation that we have such a developed, of course we, I have concepts for that, yeah, I, I, I know very well how we could do that, but the universities are not ready uh, really to uh, uh, offer continuous uh, events and, and uh, follow up uh, workshops and especially also things for experienced supervisors. So this was my first part. Now the second part is why we have to fully keep in mind the challenges and mistakes as well as the success strategies when engaging and implementing supervisors and trainers. So what prevents and hinders engaging supervisors and what are the enabling and supporting factors? The clear and detailed knowledge of that uh, to take this serious is, is a key for success. So I want to show you uh, challenges and, and best practices or, or success stories. Uh, uh, yeah, one of the main challenges and uh, problems of engaging trainers uh, of 
engaging and training supervisors. The first is, of course, we know that very well. These, uh, let's say, last relics or still lasting <coughs> relics of old-fashioned notion of the making of a good supervisor. These are the two points where the uh, British were struggling in 1985. Yeah, uh, it's uh, first I, I repeat it. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's the notion that a very good uh, researcher is automatically a very good uh, supervisor, which of course is sometimes true, but uh, also sometimes not true. And the other is uh, the, the notion that uh, we all learned it by doing. Why should we change that? Yeah? After some time, we understood it, somehow. Uh, but there is no systematic, and there is no notion what are the best practices in the world. There are no books what very good supervisors are doing. So we, we, cannot, we can only copy from our very small uh, experience when doing a PhD, but we cannot copy in, in the wide range of, of experiences, yeah? of course they are not documented and they are not systematized. Okay, but this, there are still relics of that, of course. Uh, then another point is administration is not understanding the strategic importance of the task. Yeah? So uh, sometimes some people in the university are standing it very well, others are not giving money. Uh, uh, then uh, not understanding, not really understanding the international competitive dimension. Of course, it's a, it's a big uh, advantage to have that and, and to uh, <coughs> play in the same league, yeah? in, in the same group of universities who have uh, good doctoral schools and uh, are training their supervisors. Yeah? Because uh, then you are much more attractive for doctor candidates, for students, for other researchers coming to the university, and as a partner to collaborate in, in many things, yeah, in the area of doctor education and research. If you have that, then you are an interesting partner. If you are, have it not, uh, you are not so interesting, and of course you are falling back the more other people are doing it now. So those who do it now early, of course, have an advantage. Yeah? The others will follow. Of course, they have to follow some when there's, there's no chance not to follow in the long run. Uh, uh, another challenge or mistake is to, to try to do it with, with very low money. Yeah? So very low means more or less nothing. Uh, then the, the real goal is to reach critical mass soon. Yeah, the real goal is to increase critical mass soon of uh, trained, uh, mainly young, but also other uh, colleagues and supervisors. And this means to, to have a number of, let's say, 100, depends on the size of the university, of course, let's say 100 trained people in two and a half years or something. Yeah? Uh, because only if you have critical mass, then these people can communicate, they can exchange experience. Uh, 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 New culture of supervision is developing, so you need a critical mass. And then, of course, there is a low time phenomenon. Yeah, uh, many people say, especially uh, many universities who want to do it, uh, they are extremely anxious. Yeah, we want to do it, but I'm sure uh, when we do it, nobody will come because I know our people. They have no time. Yes, it's always true. Yeah. But if you do it, they are coming. Yeah? So they take, some take the time, and always say they, they take enough. People are taking the time that these workshops are booked out. Yeah? So it's not a problem, especially if you do it in a, a perspective where everybody can calculate his or her dates and schedules. Um, and then there are some, always some crazy expectations uh, that uh, a workshop, which uh, as an initial workshop needs two days, of course, to, to do at least the, the most important things. Yeah. Uh, could be, could you done it? Can, could you do it in half a day? Uh, because our people have no time. No, I can't. It's impossible. <laughs> um, so uh, finding the right balance between quality and quantity is very important. Yeah. Uh, we have to have a high quality in supervision and in supervisors' training, 
but the other point is, of course, uh, we have to offer this to uh, as many people in the university as possible. Uh, it cannot only be a, a measure for a few heavy ones, yeah, and have uh, uh, no chance to. Um, no, sorry. Um, some other important mistakes in phase strategies. I, I emphasize this very much because um, we have to be really aware about the, the possible mistakes yeah, to, to, to easily avoid them. Um, then uh, no real impact, yeah? uh, only doing one workshop and then thinking you can evaluate uh, supervisors' training and the consequences with one workshop. Yeah? We have one workshop, so maybe 12 people are trained, and then uh, we ask them immediately afterwards or after some months and want to decide for the universities what they say. Of course, this is ridiculous because uh, you need more experience. And, and, and <coughs> I come to the evaluation point later on. And then uh, all kind of fails advertisement when beginning with these workshops. Yeah. Uh, so that the possible participants cannot identify uh, if, if, if they are mixed in all the workshop offers and event offers, for example, of the university. Of course, it's a very special highly strategic thing. Yeah? You cannot mix it in all things which are happening. <coughs> uh, and of course the younger supervisors have explicitly to be addressed. Yeah? They, 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 they have to get uh, a per personal kind of personal invitation letter which explains what's going on. Yeah? So, uh, and, and if it's not clear if there are long-term offers that they know, yeah, now I have no time, but in, in autumn or in spring there's another workshop and then I take this one. Yeah? There's also a disadvantage, is that, that these things are not there. And the other uh, very uh, weaking point is that there is not really backing by the university's heads. And it's not part of the university's strategic planning. Uh, as far as I understood, you are not in this uh, uh, more or less uh, complicated situation that some people want to do it, but the universities had think, well, yeah, we are liberal. Everybody can do what he wants, but it's 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 not our problem. Yeah. Um, so of course, it, it, uh, the universities heads have to go ahead somehow, uh, and there is you can still see relatively often this fear that supervisors' training will be seen as a sign of existing incompetence. And we, we cannot do it in a broad sense because uh, most of our, especially more experienced supervisors, may think that if they participate this would be a sign that they are somehow incompetent or something. Of course it's not, it's, it's contrary. It's, it's contrary. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, <laughs> It, it's presupposition, yeah, which, which is not clarified. Yeah. It's just uh, you, you presuppose something and you have no evidence whether this is true. Yeah, and you, you can't make university policies and uh, uh, presuppositions with, with, without evidence yeah, uh, in, in an institution which deals with science yeah, where you really need evidence. Um, yeah. I go to the next slide, but in contrary, you could, we could have uh, core strategies for the success and we have to be aware of that. Yeah? So core strategies for success are high impact from the beginning, <coughs> training 100 to 150 young supervisors within a short time, uh, developing a long-term strategy, I uh, said that, uh, and workshops for young and also for experienced supervisors and especially also for doctoral candidates. Yeah? This is very important to, to, to start with supervisors training and at the same time give workshops, uh, not supervisors training, but workshops in research supervision, only one day workshops for doctoral candidates. This is very, very important. For this, uh, if we would do that, uh, and it's just starting, for example, uh, uh, Santander, yeah, uh, you see, are, are doing it now in many. Uh, then both parties, yeah, this professional couple, the, the 
supervisor and the doctor candidate are starting with somehow the same knowledge. And this is, of course, a big advantage. Yeah. Uh, and this, this has not really been done before. Now, this is very new. Also, the, the British did not really do, uh, understand, uh, are not really doing that. Uh, to, to see always the professional couple, yeah, which has to be trained. Um, the program of follow-up workshops, uh, self-organized community of best practice, advertisement in time, explanation of tasks, objectives and benefits, uh, support from the university heads. Um, this is now the third part, why is thinking and acting with comprehensive <coughs> concepts indispensable? What do I mean with comprehensive concepts in this field? Yeah. Uh, one important point to be successful is that we need comprehensive concepts which uh, consist of a set of things, of measures, which belong together, which need each other, and you cannot be successful without a minimum set of these <coughs> things to, to reach uh, uh, synergy effects. Yeah. And so I think, I suggest to think and to act in comprehensive concepts and two examples, important examples for this topic I, I will show you. The one is a comprehensive concept in research supervision in general. It's not a complete list, yeah, but main things are there. The complete list of a let's say detailed strategic and operating plan, how to do it over the next five years, it's much longer. But uh, just to, to, to understand my idea, so you need at the end, it would be nice to have a strategic and operative plan for research supervision, implementing and driving this uh, vision and mission statement, strong commitment of the university heads again, a system, a nice system of progress monitoring and reporting, guidelines for supervisors and doctor candidates, training for supervisors and doctor candidates, convincing training certificates. Yeah, uh, I, I have designed a very nice uh, training uh, cert certificate for the two days workshops where you see what you have uh, done and what skills you have acquired. Yeah? So it's always double. Yeah? for these seven modules. And these certificates, of course, will be uh, useful, important for the future, especially for the younger ones when they uh, want to get a position or a new position that they can document uh, the skills. Yeah. Um, then uh, a comprehensive set of information measures, starter kit, uh, introductory workshops, online newsletters. Very important, some rewards and also Awards for best uh, supervision. Yeah, we have uh, awards <coughs> for best supervisor of the year now in Frankfurt, and I know that the Free University in Berlin is doing it. This is a very nice thing uh, to, to emphasize the, the effort of the uh, supervisors. Highly attractive and supportive research environment, internationalization of PhD supervision, and of course sustainability of action measures and services for the future, and that we fully understand that doing all these things is the best quality assurance we can have. So, of course, it's connected to quality assurance. All of these things we are doing, or we are talking about today, this is all quality assurance on a high level. The details of really doing quality and assuring the quality. Uh, the other is the comprehensive concept of supervisors training. So. Uh, you see these five points, the five main modules of, of the initial supervisor's training workshop I am giving, yeah, international development, supervisory biography, roles, expectations, and relationship, selection of doctor candidates, warning signs and problems, how to solve it, literature and supervisory tools, <coughs> and uh, peer coaching technique intervention. These are the main modules of, of these two days. And uh, an addition, in addition to that, of course, we need in the long term other things, you know, follow-up workshops, uh, supervisors training for doctor candidates, best in parallel, 
maybe short online courses for informing uh, information workshops of supervisors training for the heads of the doctoral schools may be helpful one day and uh, train the trainers of supervisors program. Yeah, this is of course the future because at the moment on continent Europe we have only a very few uh, trainers like me who are also supervisor and, and, and know from their own experience what they are talking about. Uh, and uh, in the, in the future, the, we cannot get critical mass on continental Europe only with people like me. We do not have enough. We have to tr train in-house trainers also. So I suggest a mixture of you know, in-house trainers, but also then sometimes from outside, yeah, not, uh, not to get stuck in, in a uh, kind of suddenly bureaucratic procedure <coughs> to do that. Yeah. Get new ideas, and but, but without in-house trainers, uh, you, you cannot really get critical mass over a long period. It's, I think it's, it's not possible if you, if you have the political vision and, and understanding that we need it for the for all our European universities. Yeah. Now, of course, at, at that moment, it's it's important that we have some who really do it in a nice way. It's best example of practice we are uh, uh, trying to implement. This is an overview of my portfolio, more or less what I am offering, but it's not only my portfolio, it's a suggestion how to do it, yeah, as a kind of a comprehensive plan and measure yeah, for younger supervisors and for the experienced ones uh, and, and then to the training program for future trainers. So, um, for part four, and part four is, is a short one. This is the question about how to evaluate supervisors' training. Um, the problem is that you, if you want to do it well, you can't <coughs> evaluate that immediately. Yeah? Because what you have to evaluate is not only the training, what the training event, you have to evaluate the improving practices of all of, all of us, of our colleagues. And so the, the, you, you can, of course, I always, after the uh, second day at the end, I ask uh, in, in the paper wall yeah, to, to document the participants uh, what was most important for them and what they want to use next week. So I always write in, in red marker, uh, what will you do on Monday? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they give me some ideas, but they will do uh, whatever this Monday is, but very rather soon. But you can only really see it in a follow-up workshop after half a year, when they come back <coughs> again and tell me uh, what of, of these things they really have used and where they have experienced some success stories. And so, you can evaluate that very nicely, but it takes some time. But <coughs> if you take this time and you ever evaluate it nicely, uh, you, you have very good data. You also can publish about that, of course. <coughs> that, yeah? that these are, this are then interesting data and stories. So, um, proper evaluation takes some time. You need testimonials of, part of participants when commenting and reviewing the workshop uh, results and the paper was, as I said, especially in the, after half a year in the follow-up workshop, you, you could use self-evaluation of participants, reports of participants in meetings of a community of black practice and supervision, when, if and when, uh, finally you have established something like that. <coughs> uh, and maybe exit questionnaires of doctor candidates who report about uh, the rising skills and practices of their supervisors. This would be a good uh, testimonial and uh, valid information somehow. So we have to understand it's a somehow complex and procedural task, but very interesting uh, to, to find out what's going on and to document that. And uh, to, to document and to write these experiences. Nobody on more or less nobody on continent Europe in all these years 
has written something about it. The British and the UK people have written a lot of little articles in pedagogical journals, just five pages and so, very pragmatic, yeah? showing their experiences, and everybody uh, gained from that. So, and my last uh, part, uh, the normal is uh, um, about the question why is the orientation on outstanding quality, convincing best practices and success stories the key to overcome procrastination and to gain right performance and sustainable development in this field in Europe and worldwide. Of course, uh, just, just the key word, the last word, worldwide, uh, to improve research supervision supervisors range the worldwide task, of course. Yeah? Yeah. And, and we uh, well should understand that. Uh, the British have understood that very well. And, uh, and you see that in this connection of uh, UK and Australia. And, and some universities have flying faculties and they do just exchange and they are here and here. And, uh, I've forgotten the name of one university. 70% 70, uh, 70 of the faculty are flying to Australia and so on. But they have done this in, in, the, in their area, yeah, of this Commonwealth area. And this is, of course, the reason that they were not interested on continental Europe to, to implement that or to teach us. Yeah. We have to identify that it's important what they are doing. But I think it's a worldwide task, and uh, especially Spain and the Spanish universities with all these connections to South America should think about that. Yeah. That it's, it's very much valuable for not only for you in the Canary Islands or in Spain, but also in the, in the Spanish-speaking world where you have contacts and influences. And, and because also of that, it's important to understand these uh, skills and tasks and to train also trainers who, who could then, at the end, do all these things. And, uh, and of course, the, 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 the one of the general big aims is to to rise the quality of doctoral education to a very high level. Yeah, not artificial, high level, quality level, very practical, very, very uh, uh, well functioning, yeah, uh, very well thought through. And, and then this is not a mystery. Yeah? It's not a mystery at all. It needs some uh, things to understand and then it's, it's relatively easy to do. But if you do not reflect on that, of course, uh, <laughs> nothing happens. We have no chance. So, uh, but it, it's a very good, it's a very good means that we do not get uh, in the future uh, a kind of, of low budget or, or uh, uh, PhDs, yeah, uh, weak PhDs, which are do not really distinguish between a master. And so that we have very that we are able to produce very, very, very good, tough uh, <coughs> young colleagues who really are able to do uh, outstanding research and at the same time have all the skills uh, to have a uh, career inside the university and outside. Yeah? So this combination with the new type of doctoral schools who provide these skills, these transferable skills, yeah, together with good supervision and supervisors training, I think this is a very strong mixture and a kind of, of a, let's say, uh, 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 a very big chance or a kind of a guarantee for the future if we do it in a, in a bigger impact. Right? And we really try to, to educate our people in Europe but also worldwide uh, in this kind of, of outstanding standard. And it's not difficult to reach. Not at all. You only have to understand it. <coughs> so I want to show you uh, reports and testimonials of mainly young supervisors uh, uh, in outstanding quality, convincing best practices and success stories, which are the key of, of uh, how to do it. Uh, first is, um, uh, this slide is about expectation needs and worries of young supervisors. But 
what was very impressive and, and always at the beginning when I started 2011 uh, surprising for me uh, when I came to different countries. Yeah? I, I told you I started in Cluj in Romania and then uh, uh, the next workshops were in, uh, in Belgium and then in Oslo and then in, in Spain and I always said there should be there must be a cultural difference. Yeah? But the young supervisors, there was no cultural difference. They always acted in the same way that they were totally open and uh, uh, were not anxious to come into the workshop and to say, yeah, um, I, mm, I'm honest, I really don't really know how to do it. Yeah? I come that you tell me. What, what, are, what is the state of the art? What, what do we not know? Yeah, and uh, so, and they were very open in, in uh, articulating at least at last these three legs. Yeah, the lack of knowledge and experience. So, to know what is supervision, I don't know. I don't really. I don't know. Don't know how to do it. Uh, uh, Learn to supervise. I don't know if I'm doing it well, if there is a proper way to do it. This were, this are original sentences, yeah? Yeah. documented, written down sentences. And of course, the, the big thing was the lack of time and communication. They all say openly, we, we do not have enough time. And does the workshop help us to manage uh, not the time, time cannot be managed, but to manage myself and my work better that I have more time for my doctor candidates or more intensive time. And of course, if uh, it helps you with your time. Um, and so the investment of, of the two days is, is uh, if it works well, and mainly I think it works well, uh, saves you not only another two days, <laughs> saves you <laughs> two weeks, two months, and uh, maybe <laughs> perhaps two years <laughs> of bad experiences. Um, and the lack of a systematic approach. They identify this very uh, quickly uh, if I say, uh, look, you, you do not you understand the topics which I mentioned more or less, yes, you know something about it, but you have no systematics because we didn't produce any systematics. It's not surprising. Yeah? And then they understand, yeah, we, I have no systematics now. I, I get some systematics. I need some systematics. And with systematics, I'm better off, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this, this was really surprising for me that they so openly are able to address that and, and um, Yeah, and are highly curious to, to know all these things. Um, and then another testimonial is feedback and follow-up workshops after six months. This is this evaluation question. What are they telling me after six months? These are also original testimonials. Yeah. Uh, now I, I really have developed from a maternal way to do it to a professional. Yeah, for, for the topic is professionalization of PhD supervision of this initial workshop. The start is terrifying. Mutual expectations is a very good way. I'm more systematic as candidates. Meetings and objectives. I make them write the agenda and meeting report. Yeah, so reporting, uh, documenting. My relationship with my doctor candidate has improved because of the continuous <coughs> meetings. More tight supervision with problematic candidates. I'm more realistic. I'm trying to see the warning signs. I talk with my co-supervisor about expectations, I'm making systematic use of the toolkit, I'm delegating more and more structured with my time. And uh, this uh, testimonial, I like this very much, because one uh, uh, little bit more uh, experienced uh, colleague said, uh, the workshop helped me to save time and to work much more relaxed. That was, I'm very happy about this. It's, uh, uh, sentence, yeah. <coughs> um, I but want short <coughs> examples of the best practice examples at the University of Iowa, Chile. 
uh, just to, to, to inform you, yeah, we do not have the time to make this uh, in depth. Uh, so it was a pilot project from April 2013 to May 15. There were nine initial and three follow-up workshops. Uh, around 100 doctor candidates were trained. Uh, there was a workshop for doctor candidates and workshop, one workshop for head of doctoral schools and then this uh, TTS program training for future trainers of supervisors from uh, October 14 to May 15 and now these four trainers are uh, ready-made trained and they have early January they have given their first totally independent from me workshop yeah? in, in Spanish before it was in English, of course, I, unfortunately I cannot uh, do it in Spanish. Uh, uh, they told me it was very much successful. If you want to see more about that, there was in January uh, this uh, EOA CDE meeting in Delft on this topic, uh, supervision and uh, supervisors training, and you see the presentation of two colleagues of Tarragona and of me, yeah, with much more details, uh, very nice presentations. The preconditions, of course, are very important. They were nice in Tarragona. It was an initiative of the excellence campus there, of Jordi Cartania. And then uh, the new established doctoral school took over and it had the support of the rector. And this, these are uh, success conditions yeah, that, that then it works. <coughs> and so we reached critical mass in a relatively short time, constant interest and participation of, in this two and a half years in the workshops and uh, very early started a community of best practice and supervision because I always uh, ask the people do you want to uh, meet again and build a kind of community of best practice of, of supervisors and they were building it very quickly and there are around 20 people who meet constantly and understand themselves as organizers of uh, uh, supervision measures, for example, they have a kind of uh, uh, lunchtime meeting yeah, where they exchange experiences and, and so on and organize several things. This is very important because then uh, you have the chance to, that you yourself, some of your people are, are, are organizing that and, and you have the chance to develop, a, let's say, a new culture of supervision. Uh, culture which the people are sharing and uh, developing are really interested. It's not only a command from the top, it's, it's <coughs> from the top, but it's, it's created also from bottom up. Um, wh when I try to, <laughs> to um, summarize what I exp have experienced in, in the re uh, recent uh, uh, five years, six years, uh, <coughs> the behavior and awareness of the young supervisors, I have mentioned something of that in all these uh, 20 European or more than 20 European universities. They were very eager to learn to avoid early mistakes with expectations and selection. This is very important for them, that, that uh, we uh, prevent, yeah, we protect them to make uh, awful mistakes at the beginning uh, on which they suffer for some years, especially taking the wrong people at the beginning when they are not uh, experienced enough to, to say to some people now. Very happy to have the opportunity to understand supervisory tasks and challenges in a deeper way very early. Very happy to have the chance to early develop their own concepts on the basis of a professional approach. And then the experienced supervisors who participated in the initial workshops. It was very nice, almost uh, in all workshops, very polite and helpful, sharing experience, good and bad cases, and uh, being interested to get to know about the international state of the art. They, they mainly, very, very often uh, contributed very nicely to these workshops by telling some of their experiences um, and, and uh, sharing this and, and, and listening and, uh, and acting very helpful and polite. Uh, this is, uh, was very, very wonderful. 
uh, more than I expected. Uh, of course, uh, this is the effect that this is volunteer. Uh, those who are really interested of, of the more experienced, they come and then they really participate and share. And, and the doctoral candidates, these workshops, also extremely interested in getting to know professional knowledge and literature, understanding immediately the great opportunity to professionally cooperate with their supervisor from the beginning. This makes an extremely difference uh, to train the young uh, the starters of the doctor candidates when they were, are just admitted uh, to endow them with this knowledge, some kind of professional knowledge, because they don't have it also, not at all. They don't know there's an English literature, they don't have nothing. They even, many of them don't know their uh, expectations to the supervisors. And after one day workshop, they are totally different state of, of the art, yeah, of course. Then they know something and they have uh, no professional books and uh, they, they get a lot of formation materials and they get only a kind of a toolkit, yeah, start a cool toolkit for the doctor candidates. So um, they also understand it very well and, and quickly. Um, I want to just... Um, so Connected with the topic, engaging supervisors and changing and enriching their supervisory roles. Uh, I want <coughs> to show you just shortly the slides. Of course, we do not have nowadays uh, the reduced supervisor roles from the past. Yeah? The, the roles have enriched. There are more, more roles. It's not, not only the expert role. Yeah? It's also the manager role of the process target-oriented uh, PhD management, and especially there are uh, also roles like the evaluator of the functioning or not functioning relationship, yeah, the relationship is very important, and the mentor role for the academic field, and the coach role for um, skills and, and the whole um, uh, changing life situation yeah, and, and conflicts. And of course, if, if you are giving a job, then it's the boss role, and, and sometimes, uh, of course, it's uh, the reviewer role. So this question, uh, do the supervisors and the doctor candidates understand well these roles, and can the supervisors easily change between these roles? So uh, can we en engage supervisors in this new uh, flexible role model? This is the question to this slide. And, um, but I go on with the second slide, engaging supervisors in serving for important, new important roles and tasks. It's very much important that the, and for that the training is so nice, yeah, because the training is, is an interface yeah, where we can, we can discuss a lot of things. Um, uh, so research supervision is an extremely important interface and lifetime friends for preparing and endowing doctor candidates with the urgent needed awareness and skills for their professional occupation <coughs> future within and without academia. Are the supervisors able and ready to talk about these things? Yeah? Uh, that we well understand nowadays we have we, we are producing a kind of a hybrid <coughs> type of doctor candidate who is able to work in academia and outside of academia and the supervisors support that. And it's important that they really understand and want that. Um, and then that supervisors understand that they are in a key role, in a professional key role um, to support and to be engaged in all these things and potentially also in the train the trainers of supervisors program that supervisors nowadays understand themselves much more as a professionals of this field of supervision and supervisors training. And there's not somebody else who can do that. Yeah? It's, it's, it's up to you. It's, it's up to us, let's say. Yeah? There's not somebody else who can tell us. Yeah? It, it's, it's our professionality. Yeah? And, but we have to develop that. and to be engaged in these communities of best practices. But nevertheless, this all only can function uh, 
And because of that, there's some free space uh, if we have the uh, fully backing of, of the university cats who also understand that uh, more or less fully uh, how important it is, how it has to be done, <coughs> and that it has to be in the core strategic agenda of the university. It has to be an important part of the core strategic agenda, written agenda. It's, it's not a side order. Yeah, it's, it's in the core of that what a university is and what we are doing. Um, so this is a third slide to this uh, questions, what defines a, a supervisor, a, a very good supervisor nowadays. So I would say uh, these are areas of self-understanding, maybe also roles, but uh, perhaps areas of self-understanding. To be, um, they are uh, self-evaluators of their own practices, if they compare their practices to other practices yeah. in Europe or worldwide. Uh, this, this was not done in the past. Yeah. There was no comparison because we didn't know that there is something else developing. Then <coughs> uh, I call this uh, the self-understanding of a designer. This is very important. The, the supervisors nowadays are not only, uh, excuse me if I say only, uh, uh, very good researchers and scholars, they are also designers of these uh, measures and, and tools and, and practices of supervision. This is, is, is a design, is an art of design. It's designing, designing something new, like an architect, like designing a mid medieval cathedral or whatever. It's design. It's primary design to do that. And nobody will do that if we are not doing that. Yeah. And this, somehow we can learn from the English and Australian, but we have to develop that <coughs> according to our needs and our design ideas, of course. But it, it's important to tell, especially the young ones, uh, it's design. Yeah. Uh, you have to invent some things that things are uh, working better and, that you, and to avoid mistakes and have systematics and to write little articles and change experiences. So <coughs> uh, they are investigators of tendencies and best practices. Yeah, you are looking around what are doing others. You are investigating these things. They are researcher practitioners because these are also somehow theoretical or conceptual work, but, but it's conceptual work which has to be practical at the end. This is, is another uh, self-understanding. And, and they are members of communities of best professional practice. And they are collaborators in international networks of supervisors and trainers. Yeah, they are networks, especially around EOA, CDB. But if you are doing that, for example, the University of Las Palmas is doing that, <coughs> of course, then um, you are immediately uh, member in another club. They are a member in the international club of those universities who are doing that. So you can invite people, you can go there. You immediately have uh, a lot of more collaborators and friends worldwide yeah, who, who uh, if, if you raise your hand or show your card, they react on <coughs> it. They, oh yeah, oh, uh, yeah, come join, uh, explain. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very important to understand that. Uh, and there are authors to, to share the experience by writing something, by documenting, and in the end, of course, there are informers, <coughs> informers of institutional development and change. Th these are very nice aspects, I think, and roles. Yeah. Very, very creative things and, and very important things that, that you understand you are an international developer and designer and you do it together with your other peers in Frankfurt or in here and there and in Tarragona and in Santander and, and, and it's, it's, it's a community which needs its other. What I have done in the recent uh, decades uh, is grown on international contacts yeah, in the area of UA and CEE. I alone, we alone in Frankfurt couldn't have. It was totally impossible to do that. Yeah. 
So, coming to the end, um, solutions and suggestions for engaging doctoral supervisors and candidates is kind of summing up. And maybe I repeat the one and the other thing. It's extremely important starting as early as possible with training measures for early stage supervisors as well as for newly admitted doctoral candidates. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful to be invited here and to see that there is a um, strong commitment or, or plans <coughs> and, and uh, ideas to do that. It's very important to do it and for the younger ones to start as early as possible for the young supervisor as early as possible to get the workshop and also for the doctoral candidate as soon as they admit it get such a workshop. Not to wait. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something they have to know as a starter kit package. Yeah. Um, then that's what I, I mentioned, uh, this training in parallel yeah, for the, this professional couple, the doctoral candidate and the supervisor. Top down and bottom up again, um, leadership and strong support from the rectors, the faculty deans and the doctoral school level, and using the bright awareness and enthusiasm of the young supervisor and doctor candidates. This, this, uh, this is carrying you if you get this support, yeah? if they are enthused about these things, and they are <coughs> starting strongly with high impact. Professional information management yeah, for advertising and explaining these things. They have to explain at the beginning for maybe this is first and second year because people are not really used and, and of course they are still under time pressure and so on. So we have to explain and prepare these things that it's well understood. It does not come totally from itself. Step by step procedural implementation. Yeah, so uh, other things have to follow, not only once an initial workshop and then <laughs> the next 20 years nothing else, but only creating a community of best practice, <coughs> building up a new, highly innovative, supportive, productive supervision culture with the big aim. And of course, um, again, the guarantee of stability and continuity of all these measures. This is very important. This is very important for the heads of the university that they say <coughs> this will be in our strategic plan for many years or forever and guarantee the, the continuity and stability. Yeah? Because it, it's sometimes difficult for universities, um, if you are honest, it, to guarantee that because the rector is changing and situations are changing and maybe other people are. Uh, responsible for that we still think somehow in the old way but we we have to do our best what we could do that we can guarantee the stability and also to take it in the university law or something that it's it's made stable yeah? because then it's much easier to, to develop step by step and, and to take everybody with you so and, and of course to look to others who have a good experience and have good ideas how to do that, the stability. So, <coughs> thank you for our attention and I show you some of our uh, international community of best practice. Yeah. This is the final group of, of the workshops in Tarragona. This is the initial workshop in Krakow. Here we have the initial workshop in uh, Santander, and this is uh, the initial workshop in Frankfurt. <laughs> so these are all <coughs> somehow historical, historical developments. Yes, yes. We, we, we didn't have that before. <laughs> yeah. So I'm interested in your questions. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Brentel. And now we have a short time for, uh, for uh, questions. Tenemos unos pocos minutos para preguntas a continuación. Eh, de hecho, me, I'd like to, to stimulate to doctoral candidates to, 
to tell us uh, what they think about uh, in, in what way this, uh, this uh, supervisor training program can improve our, the way in which we supervise uh, uh, doctoral candidates. Perhaps they can tell us some, some mistakes that normally they, they find that we, we, we do. Uh, seguramente algunos eh, doctorandos podrán decirnos cuál es su impresión, en qué medida piensan que, que este tipo de programas son interesantes y qué tipo de, de dificultades en la supervisión de doctorandos, en la dirección de doctorandos, eh, piensan que, que, que errores cometemos y en qué medida se podrían eh, resolver. No sé si alguien tiene alguna pregunta. Yo, de hecho, por ir eh, abriendo un poco un cortísimo debate, porque no tenemos tiempo para más, sí querría hacer un par de preguntas. The first one is about, uh, uh, well, you have talked us about uh, the importance of these kind of uh, training programs for young supervisors, new supervisors, not necessarily uh, young supervisors, but um, my, my question is about older supervisors or more experienced supervisors, uh, because I'm sure that they can ask us about uh, what can we learn with this kind of uh, programs. And I'm not sure about the, the, the answer to this question. Uh, I believe that we can improve, uh, obviously, ever. We can improve our, the way in which, in which we work, but uh, I'm not sure about how to, how to answer them. Uh, for the, uh, what is the answer for this question? How can they improve? How ca what can they learn by following this, this kind of of the more experienced. Yes, yes, for older or more experienced supervisor. People who has uh, supervised several PhD theses. Yes. <coughs> In these workshops which I have given, mm -hmm. there are always uh, experienced supervisors too. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, most of them also find something specially helpful for them. Yeah? Of course, they, they have their experience and, and uh, some years and maybe they have uh, already supervised uh, let's say 10 and 5 have uh, finished and 5 are on the way or something yes, like that. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> uh, but um, there are elements they have not done. Yeah? They, they, mm. they are new. What is for example very uh, uh, new for, for most of all the supervisors is this really uh, emphasis on clarifying expect really expectations, mutual expectations, or working with tools. The, 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 yes. There are many aspects mm -hmm. uh, which can, let's say, enrich their practice. <coughs> of course, it's, it's not like a young supervisor who says, oh, I don't know, tell me everything, but it enriches. Mm. And, yes, Let's say for a long-term concept, of course, we should offer a that uh, experienced supervisor also can participate <coughs> in this initial workshop. <coughs> but there should be special things for experienced supervisors. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe half-day workshops on a, on a specific topic, mm -hmm. motivation, for example, or um, co-supervision problems. In, research groups and so on. They, there, there are a lot of specific topics which do not uh, need so much time because it's only one topic. This is the first answer. The second answer is the um, experienced supervisors are, many of them are very much interested in sharing experiences and discussing uh, problematic cases. So uh, this kind of, the last tool I'm offering in the initial workshop this peer coaching tool yeah, uh, to discuss cases in, in a structured way. Uh, many experienced supervisors are interested to exchange experience and, and uh, come together in a, in a somehow structured way. Because in the past, when we tried something without doing this in a structured way, uh, this was not really effective. Of course, the, the situation I, I, at the beginning, I organized some meetings like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it was very often a talk about um, um, uh, about problems, but uh, uh, not coming to the point. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. talking about ours and complaining. Mm -hmm. how, how, how 
what an awful situation everybody is yeah, in, in this job. And, but if you do it in a more structured way, it's, 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 it's very effective, very much effective. People are always astonished. This exercise is, is one hour and five minutes. Yeah? And every group is, is able in, in to solve a, uh, by peer consultancy to, to solve these problems and to uh, advise the colleague, the case giver uh, in, in this short time, if you uh, follow such things. In, in fact, I believe that another, another uh, uh, result, immediate result of this kind of program is that supervision is more effect, efficient. In fact, in the present uh, situation in Spain, we have uh, new rules uh, for, uh, for PhD thesis uh, development. In fact, the, the time to do it is, no, is limited to three years, perhaps four years, which is the average uh, time in Europe, I believe. Yes, yes. And, uh, uh, but before, we spent perhaps five to six, seven or more years. And this way, perhaps we can, we can be more, more efficient on supervision. And, but I have an, a, another question about the, uh, this uh, good practices in supervision, because uh, we are very, uh, it's very common to find people who, uh, professors who, who supervise uh, several theses at the same time, simultaneously. And I believe that is not a good practice in general. It depends on the conditions, on the topic, on the, but uh, I suppose that there is not a, a magic number. It depends on the time you need to, to, to do it. The question is that if you believe that it's a good idea to, to, to address multi-supervision uh, or it's better to focus on a few uh, doctoral candidates, no more than a certain number? I don't yes, I, okay, thanks for the question. Um, yes, of course, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good practice not to take too many. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to give an ideal number, this is difficult because the fields are difficult, uh, different, yeah? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in, in big research groups, in, in chemistry or, or biology or whatever, uh, uh, <coughs> if the main supervisor has very good co-supervisors, of course, he or she could take some more. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if this co-supervision <coughs> is really functioning and the main supervisor holds the contact really to, to his or her co-supervisors. Then, uh, but uh, if we talk about an, uh, one single supervisor, and especially a young supervisor, I always ask, I, I, I send a pre-questionnaire before the workshop, this international workshop, and I ask the supervisor, how many uh, doctor candidates do you want to supervise? And the answer of the young ones is always between uh, two and three maximum. Yeah. Uh, and it, I think this is... Uh, for young supervisors, I believe it perhaps is too much. But yeah, but maybe only one or two. Only one or two. But it's, 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 it's yeah, one or two, or some, mm -hmm. some, some say three, but, but then uh, this is absolute uh, maximum. So, so they, are, they are cautious, yeah. And uh, okay. yeah, so, so my suggestion, of course, is uh, not too, too bad. Bueno, yo, yo personalmente tengo más cuestiones, pero como de hecho me voy a reunir después con el profesor Brentel, se las puedo hacer. O sea que eh, la cuestión es si ustedes tienen alguna cuestión más o alguna curiosidad. ¿Algún comentario? Eh, lo que quería decir es que hemos traído este tema aquí eh, es controvertido, ¿verdad? Porque ahora le vamos a decir a los compañeros que han dirigido tesis que, que esto tiene otras dimensiones que no sabemos hacer. Y esto me lo dejado muy claro, que la tesis ha pasado de ponte ahí y a ver lo que sacas, a, a supervisar y a, a obtener un, un egresado que sea eh, útil a, como ha dicho el profesor, a, no solo a la academia, sino que a lo mejor se conseguía este efecto de una manera casi autónoma, sino que también pudiera ser útil a la sociedad y principalmente a la industria. En fin, en ello estamos y yo creo que el director de la escuela tiene planes sobre esto y el staff de la escuela tiene planes sobre esto para iniciar cursos de, eh, con esta orientación. 
Det er omkring at tage det ved, at det er så meget kontroversielt, at det er så meget kontroversielt. Jeg tror, at det er overvejt, fordi du har til at gå 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 til Um, concerning this uh, comment, this, uh, what this, as you mentioned, this uh, was established firstly in the UK, isn't it? In the UK and Australia. So, in, um, as soon as in 1985. So, do you have any data about how it, it improved the, the way they, they, they do uh, uh, the English people produce a kind of, of paper telling uh, what they move to this new? Uh, view of the doctor's advice and supervisor activity. Do you have any data from the UK? <coughs> uh, yeah. uh, no, I, I, but, uh, I, at the moment I'm searching myself for uh, a paper who is uh, uh, writing the history, really. Yeah? It, it's, it, I, I found it in between uh, things. Yeah? Mm. Uh, but, but there are some uh, supervisors and others who, who uh, tell the story a little bit, yeah, like Gina Viska, for example. And uh, um, at the moment, uh, we have to make our own research. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, the the yeah. Well, a real historical paper, I don't know, but I, I know very well how they somehow how they develop <coughs> and they are doing it now yeah, and how. Uh, how much it is standardized, and uh, you, you can see it easily on the websites of the UK universities. Yeah. And 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 they uh, they have, for example, in Imperial College, they have very good guidelines and, and, and explanations also on, on supervisors telling how they do that. Yeah. Um, I, I have some of these materials. Uh, they they have yeah. some, somehow produced professional materials because. Now, in, in universities like King's College and Imperial College and so on, <coughs> uh, it's, 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 it's part of the um, general procedure every semester and year. Yeah. Mm. Well, so I would say that we are going to be controversial, but I have seen here is a list of universities that I have seen in the main meeting. I'm just telling that uh, what well, it could be controversial matter, but uh, the point is that uh, we have seen uh, a very prestigious university following this kind of uh, strategy, so, like the University of Cambridge, or for King Cambridge, so much. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I think that what we have done is formal pensar sobre los profesores, los doctorados, y los investigadores que salen de este asunto y ya just to to end. My question and comments as to tell you to thank you for your talk. This is uh, as the first step in our um, track to to develop this kind of activities. I would like to uh, from the board of that. Thank you very much for the talk. Yes. Thank you. And I also want uh, perhaps to make a last <coughs> remark to, to, to your uh, 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 talk now. Uh, sometimes uh, people think uh, that it may be difficult uh, to do these things because uh, somehow the leading European universities, especially in the UK, are doing that. It's King's College, it's Imperial, it's Oxford, it's Cambridge, but or it's Karolinska Institute. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all because uh, it's much easier to, to um, let's say, copy it or develop it from those who really know. Yeah? It's much more dangerous and difficult and misleading if you try to copy those who have not really understood the task. Yeah? It's, it's much more easier to, to follow the, the champions. And, and the champions, of course, as we know, everybody uh, always, and, and we know it perhaps especially uh, talking about soccer and football in Spain, yeah? <laughs> the champions from Barca or so, if, if you ask them, they know, yeah? It's, it's better to work with them and, and it's, it's much easier to understand it. So, so don't be afraid that they think, oh yeah, it's Oxford, it's Cambridge. 
go, go to the web page. I, I showed you Oxford Learning Institute. Uh, very nicely explained, yeah, very clear. And <coughs> so uh, it's, it's, it's easy to catch up, yeah. It's easy to catch up and it's easy to, uh, to improve this wheel others have already invented, yeah, and to make your own. So, uh, and then this, this is very nice for me to see that especially these Spanish universities uh, are uh, have a, a very good understanding how, how to do it and how to use the situation. Yeah. And they are tough enough to, to, to dare to do it. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. do not, they are not, not worried, they are not anxious. <laughs> Bien, pues no vamos con un poquito de retraso y por no retrasarlo mucho más, que a continuación empezaremos con los, eh, las primeras fla eh, las primeras clasificaciones, el primer grupo de clasificación de lo, del certamen de la tesis en cinco minutos, pues nos tomamos solo 15 minutos de receso, si les parece. Pues bien, está bien.